Hello friends, in today's presentation, I will be discussing about the non-union shaft humerus, which will be a case-based discussion. So the case is a 58-year-old female with history of closed shaft humerus fracture right side. And the patient had presented to us with recurrent osteosynthesis failure of her shaft humerus fracture. The patient didn't have any comorbidities and any pre-existing risk factors which can result in non-union. If we see the radiograph, we see this is a quite simple fracture which has an intact wedge fragment here and there should not be any problem gaining intraoperative compression in the structure and fixation. So the first surgery was done was open reduction internal fixation with conventional dynamic compression plate. So this was the surgery. You see the post-operative radiographs, but it failed within next two months. Why? Now, if you see the radiograph, there are some problems. Do you find the problem with the length of the plate? Probably not. Why? Because four cortices using compression screws are purchased both proximally as well as in distal fragment. But you see this screw is quite close to the fracture site. And another problem, the reduction is not anatomical. So whenever you are planning for a rigid construct, you need to have absolute stability in addition to the anatomical reduction. Here the anatomical reduction is not there. Therefore, probably there is stress concentration around the fracture site. So slightest stress in this area can result in early failure of the implant. So therefore, probably that is a factor that resulted in non-union or early implant failure in this case. Now the second surgery was also failed. What the surgeon had done, he had again used a dynamic compression plate, placed four screws proximally and distally, but here he had left the hole empty near the fracture site. So probably to avoid the stress concentration, but still it failed. Why? Now if you see the surgeon had tried to use a virgin site for placement of the plate, the medial side, so maybe because of the because the bone was better on the medial side, the lateral side was already used. He had also used circular along with marginal freshening and bone grafting. But you see the problem is here because you see this part was already hold with multiple screws in the previous surgery, both proximally and distally. So if you are using the cortical screws in already empty bone, so definitely the pull out strength of the cortical screws is less compared to the locking screws. So maybe the plate should have been a bit longer and locking screws should have been used instead of the cortical screws. The cortical screws purchase is definitely inferior to the locking screws. The construct it provides is having such issue that each screw will fail individually while in locking plate the pull out strength is contributed by whole of this construct. The circular wire will probably not help because they are not rigidly fixing the plate to the bone. So therefore probably that is a factor that again resulted in non-union because of the poor mechanical strength of the fixation. Another point that was probably lacking was lack of the compression at the fracture site. You see there is some empty space entirely here also. That means probably the compression was not there. If there is lack of a compression that also contributes to the limited mechanical strength of the fixation. So you have to go for fixation with adequate compression at the fracture site whenever you are addressing the revision surgery. Now the third surgery was done. Here the surgeon has gained good amount of compression. You see, fracture is only marginally visible on this side. Otherwise, there isn't good compression at the fracture site. Now the surgeon has used the posterior aspect for plating. The first surgery was done on the lateral aspect. The second plate was placed on the medial aspect. Now surgeon has used a different site for placement of the plate, the posterior aspect. But again, you see the problem is again here. Definitely he has used a longer plate that will be beneficial and he'll be getting good purchase in the terminal parts. But you see that there are holes in this part, 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 in this part. That means this whole segment of bone is quite poor. So even if he has achieved good compression at the fracture site, the mechanical strength of this fixation might not be adequate. The cortical screws placed here might not be having good pull-out strength and they are inferior to the locking screws as we have already discussed. So the good point here is good amount of compression, but the bad point is that the plate should have been revised to a locking plate. Therefore, it was bound to fail. Again, it failed. Now, the last surgery which was done by us, in which, first of all, we pointed out the issues that need to be addressed in the fixation. First, we needed good pull-out strength, which was not addressed in any of the previous surgeries. Then we needed good fracture side compression, which was done in the third surgery, but not in the previous one. And then we needed a rigid construct because it is a non-union. It is not going to heal with callus formation. The vascularity of the bone is already compromised. So we need absolute stability at the fracture site with compression at the fracture site, which will be helped by the rigid construct. And we have to avoid any stress concentration like 
placing any screw close to the fracture site and avoiding a short plate which can result in stress concentration in the terminal parts. So we used a very long locking plate which spanned almost whole of the humerus proximally and distally. We used the lateral surface only but the issue we had already discussed that there was poor bone hold because of the pre-existing screw holes. Therefore we used a fibular strut that was placed intramillary both in the proximal and distal fragment then after that we place the locking plate then drill our locking screws why because the fibula which will be there in, in the intramedullary cavity will help in providing additional mechanical stability to the fracture so in addition to the locking plate we are having stability contributed by the fibula intramedullary fibula strut so we gain the compression at the fracture side you see the fracture is not visible and we use a locking plate and avoided screws adjacent to the fracture side mechanically we had provided a good construct which should heal if you follow the principles so this was the follow-up radiograph you see this there was healing with good cortical continuity in both AP and lateral views and I've told you it healed without any colors formation because the non-union is different than the acute fracture non-union you have to gain compression at the fracture site so the healing will occur by the primary union only there will not be any callus formation callus formation can occur in non-unions which are treated by intramedullary nailing with good bone stock proximally and distally because they add because they induce an acute injury actually this was an oligotrophic non-union in oligotrophic non-union the fracture ends have limited vascularity so we have to go for compression at the fracture site then only it is going to heal it will heal without any callus formation however in hypertrophic non-unions which are having good vascularity at the fracture site it may have some callus formation but in oligotrophic it is not so it was radiologically united in eight months and functional restoration was achieved by that the patient was able to do all her routine activities as she was doing previously so the so take home message will be we have to stick the basic principles of fracture management we have whenever we are going for a rigid construct or absolute stability we have to gain anatomical reduction only then there are chances that the fracture will unite otherwise there are chances of non-union and locking plate should be preferred whenever the bone quality is compromised especially in the revision surgeries because they are having superior pullout strength compared to the conventional dynamic compression plate screws and plate length should be in acute fractures it should be two to three times the fracture length for committed fracture and for simple fracture it should be long enough that is eight to ten times in length but that principle is for the relative stability for simple fractures when we are gaining compression at the fracture site we have to span four screws proximally and distally in case we are using dynamic compression plate in a healthy bone but if we are using locking screw then three screws proximally and distally are also sufficient and bone graft will not work unless you have addressed the mechanical strength. Like in the examples we have seen, the bone graft was used in almost all surgeries, but it was not helpful because the fixation was compromised and had limited mechanical strength. Therefore, it is always important to address the mechanical stability in addition to the bone graft placement. Thank you.